All right, Jordan, who are you and what do you do? You're my manager. You're supposed to know that. Yeah, but for the purposes of people watching this thing, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, so uh, my name is Jordan. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Convex. Recently, I've been working on AI efforts, which has involved uh, leading the development of Chef. Yeah, so a lot of people will be surprised that like Convex Chef has basically one person working on it. That person's you. Yeah, it's been a lot of work recently, but yeah, it's been pretty exciting. And I mean, so you've you've been working on Chef uh, mostly solo, right? Which means a lot of what you've been doing is how to figure out how to get the most kind of returns out of an LLM for the minimum level of investment. Yes, that's correct. So Jordan, for today, I'm particularly interested in what you've learned about how to get LLMs to do a good job, basically. How to, how to have like code gen tools produce good output. What I've learned from building with LLMs is that you should limit the optionality that they have. Uh, so this means limiting the optionality of which tools they can use, the types of frameworks that they have, because if you can focus the LLM on the task that you have, um, then they won't go off and make these other decisions which can get the LLM into an irrecoverable state. Um, and that is where these things uh, like really fail. And you can get into things where it just continuously tries to fix something, but they're, um, yeah, it can never get to a good place again. And, and this might be counterintuitive to folks because, you know, it seems that you can give an LLM a question and it'll give you an answer. But what you're saying is like qualitatively, LLMs just produce better output if you give them fewer options, if you give them fewer states to explore. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Um, I would say that this is like very similar to the bet that we make at Convex, which is that humans are like do better when like you have these good abstractions for code. Um, and so, yeah, we like with LLMs, we figured out like they enjoy these abstractions and like kind of like work in the same way in which like, yes, you could go into the weeds and do all these crazy things. But like realistically, you only want to have, I guess like you want to only configure the things that are like really applicable to the uh, to the task at hand. And so when you don't have to go off and configure Terraform or you don't have to go off and um, I don't know, like figure out what tools you use and you just say, hey, these are the good tools to use, um, then it can really, really like get supercharged and really be able to um, complete a task with a lot more um, efficiency and accuracy. So I guess qualitatively what you're saying is like the LLMs have some certain level of cognitive ability perhaps. And if you're focusing that cognitive ability on like correct states in the search tree, you're going to yep. get better results than if you're allowing them to have kind of free reign of your code base. Yes, correct. And so in what ways can someone limit the optionality for an LLM? Like what techniques could you use to focus an LLM on doing useful stuff without perhaps getting sidetracked? Yeah, so I think one of the good things is just like having good abstractions for the different actions that they can take. So this a lot of times like requires a lot of thought, but having like very distinct things that an L1 can do and having, yeah, having those things perform like tasks that are like really relevant to what you want the outcome to be. So like, for example, in Chef, that means like having an edit tool and having a, um, a, a read environment variables tool or different things like that in which like the the separation of concerns is like very clear and so when the LLM gets into a state where it needs to do something it's like very clear that it should be calling a certain tool um, yeah so this is kind of different to how we often interact with LLMs right because we're often interacting with LLMs with pros with a big open-ended paragraph and I guess what you're saying is there's some situations where a big open-ended paragraph is most appropriate but there's also situations where you should just give the LM access to well-defined APIs that just happen to do the right thing yeah exactly um, and so okay so we want to give kind of good APIs and good like maybe uh, tool core abilities to LLMs uh, how do you feel about um, stuff like language choice type safety how much they affect the ability of an LM to produce like a good full stack project so I think Convex is, of course, a really good fit for LLMs because it does have like the ability for us to type check the code. Um, and so like with Convex, I would say is like, you know that like if you define your schema a certain way and define your functions a certain way, that you can get those exact same uh, like types on your front end. And so that is like a very good heuristic for correctness um, that like other platforms aren't able to provide. And so we are able to with like a higher level of confidence, I won't say 100%, because if code type checks doesn't necessarily mean that it's correct, but we like get a lot a lot closer to being there when you are able to type check. Um, and we've seen that like OEMs can yeah, see those errors and we give like those clear 
um, like responses back of saying, hey, like you used a type that wasn't available or you didn't use the right return type of this function. Um, and then the LM is able to go in and fix that. Um, and so that has been like really helpful for um, not only um, LLMs, I guess, like getting it right on the first turn of being able to kind of be like self-healing and be able to fix the errors that they do make. Knowing whether the code's correct, right? Because if you can determine whether the code is correct and the LLM can determine if the code is correct, it can then go and iterate and, and keep moving forwards in kind of almost like a greedy search uh, yep. way. But if it doesn't know whether the code is correct, it could really go down these paths we've seen where um, you're producing kind of erroneous code and getting quite deep into it. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the best, uh, I guess like one of the best qualities like a good engineer, or I guess like, yeah, one of the best qualities of a good engineer is that like you write your code, but you also can like see like and observe how it actually works and so like for a while LLMs like they could just like only write the code and they could like never see like how that interacted with like the environment they're in and we saw like a, a huge I guess like jumping capabilities like once we saw tool calling happen and like we saw how a cursor um, it like it became a lot more powerful um, and so yeah when you have like the LLM is like almost able to see how I guess like in the environment with like okay like this thing type checks or this thing um, uh, just or I guess, yeah, I guess the main thing is just that it type checks. But yeah, so like it, you, it can like see the correctness of its code in a way that like it wasn't able to previously. And so when you when it's able to see the correctness of it, then it can like continue to go in a loop, which like, yeah, which really makes the LLM be able to um, like more likely get to a good state. And so say someone out there wants to build an AI code gen tool and sure, they can build it on convex that'd be a great idea they'd get type safety and all this kind of stuff but let's say they're even not using convex what kind of 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 um guardrails or, or or kind of characteristics should they embed in the design of their code gen tool if they want good results uh so one of the the things that i think was really important in chef is that we have a, an opinionated template so we chose a set of tools that we knew worked well together and then we decided to include that in a template because oftentimes if you have the LLM just like start with a blank slate, then it could do a bunch of different things. And I like the template choice is, I guess, kind of, it is important, but it doesn't, I guess, like necessarily change the quality of like the, the output itself. Like the app like needs to just have like good code in it. And so like when you have like the opinion template, you already make the decision allow it to focus on like actually writing the code instead of, instead of having to make choices, for, like potentially a suboptimal choice for which uh, like frameworks to use. And so that is like very helpful. Um, what is something else that could be helpful? Well, I think, I mean, yeah, some partial to convex, but I think like anything where it has like end-to-end -end type safety is like very helpful for LLMs uh, because it can see that correctness of all the way from the back end to the front end. Um, so yeah, I, convex provides that, but I think, I don't know, you, you might be able to find another flap after that test, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I think like those main things really contribute to uh, like having a very successful coach and uh, application. And this feels like a pretty interesting shift for the industry because a lot of developers who are using an AI code gen tool, often maybe they don't care what auth library they're using or what billing library they're using, et cetera. They just want it to work. And so I guess your observation or our observation is that like picking these things on behalf of the user and focusing evals on making sure uh, the LM performs well on a certain set of tools oftentimes matters more than picking the specific tools themselves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jordan. Do you have any parting words for anyone who uh, wants to use LLMs for code gen, not just as a consumer, but also as someone building code gen tools with LLMs? Um, I would say that the main thing, the main takeaway that I have is, yeah, that good abstractions matter. Um, yeah, it's important to think about uh, the types of tools that uh, your LLM has access to. Um, the types of tools that or frameworks that it uses to actually build the application, uh, all these things uh, like should be like very thoughtful uh, because they can have like lots of impact on the output. And so you want to make sure that you really make sure that all the things you're using fit well together and that they aren't confusing because the, the more that you can have like the separation of concerns and just really have the LLM focus on the task at hand, the better results that you're going to get. Awesome. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks.